Hey, 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 welcome to the Heath Mulligan Project, the podcast where we're helping you discover your purpose, your passion, and your possibilities. And today I want to talk to you about character. You've heard me talk a lot about personal growth, personal development, leadership development, all these things. <clears throat> the fact is, character is the bedrock and the destination. If you're not, it doesn't matter how much you grow or how much you learn or how much you know, if you do not have a solid, consistent character, then none of it matters. Because eventually, your lack of character is going to bring down everything else around you. Uh, I just started reading uh, John Maxwell's book, The 21 Indispensable Qualities of a Leader. It's a companion book to uh, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. <clears throat> but also over the weekend, uh, several articles came out about the pa former pastor of Hillsong East Coast, Carl Lentz. Uh, Carl Lentz uh, became famous uh, by befriending Justin Bieber and some other celebrities and um, really became <clears throat> more of a jet setter than a pastor. And he was removed from leadership in early November uh, as it came to light that he had been involved in a, an affair for several months. Uh, one of the articles I read uh, linked to a an interview uh, the Good Morning America did with the young lady that he had the affair with. And it was it was a heartbreaking interview because typically when and this is horrible uh, typically when when I have seen or heard about a you know pastor having an affair it it's a lot of times someone in the church uh, it's someone where the the, the pastor you know, abused his position or his authority, and, and it's a tangled, tangled web. But there's a little bit of, um, you know, the person, it, it, they're in the church, and, and it's someone in the church that they've had an affair with. I've heard of pastors, you know, having affairs with their secretaries and, and different people. But what was different about this interview was that Carl Lentz wouldn't even tell this young lady his last name. He wouldn't tell her what he did. He told her, hey, don't, don't Google me. And... It, it, I just found that man what a what a red flag he's clearly ashamed of what he's doing. he clearly knows what he's doing is wrong. he's trying to he's trying to hide things not just from his family and his church but from this person he's cheating with, and somewhere along the way. Carl Lentz's character got lost in the shuffle. And as you read you know, the different articles and, you, and you, you read about the culture he was creating there at the church, it, it is, it's a very heartbreaking thing. And so I would say to you, um, as you know, people are messaging me all the time. Hey, hey, Heath, what books are you reading? And 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 
and I think that's very important. But I, I even last night as I was preparing for bed and I was kind of mapping out what I wanted to read, I started asking myself, why do I, why do I want to read these books? And so I started looking differently, and I'm like, you know what, what, what are the things that I really want to work on? Am I reading, is this a book that I want to read? It's a good book, but is it a book that I want to read just to say that I've read it? Or am I truly wanting to be transformed as a person? Am I really wanting to grow? Am I really wanting to do the hard work of developing and and building and strengthening my character? And so I, I think I pick some of the, hard, you know, uh, there's a book on by Pete Gregg, and, you know, How to Pray, uh, Doctor Neil T. Anderson, The Bondage Breaker, um, books like that, books that that are really going to deal with some spiritual issues that I've struggled with, and I and I'm excited. I'm excited to go through those books, and even as I've, I'm, I'm also reading, uh, you know, finishing Think, Learn, Succeed, and it was, it was like drinking from a fire hose this morning. Doctor Leaf, you know, kind of going through her her five step learning process, which is kind of the, the the character, the the foundation of everything she writes, and just really challenged not to read, but you know. It's one thing to to complete a book and and to say that you've read it, but am I really processing the information? So I've I've just been challenged this morning, and and like, am I am I trying to say okay, I've read all these books, look at me, look at me, or am I truly wanting to be transformed? What's the yeah, because the character for me, am am I wanting? to grow am I wanting to have personal development for bragging rights or am I truly wanting to be the best person I can be to have a positive influence on the world those are things that I'm not struggling with those are things I'm wrestling with today in a very positive positive way let me share with you uh, four things that John Maxwell says about character here. Uh, number one, character is more than talk. Uh, I think that, you know, being in ministry, you can get up every Sunday and you can preach and you can say all the right things, but it's it's who you are behind closed doors and it's how you treat people that really matter. Uh, there's been lots of pastors that, that I've seen how they treat people behind closed doors and and then you hear them preach and it just kind of falls on deaf ears. You're like, even if what they're saying in the pulpit is true, you know that the place from where they're saying it is not true. Number two, talent is a gift, but character is a choice. Uh, that's the bedrock of Dr. Lee's research is that our thoughts, our thinking, everything's a choice. Um, we have to make a choice to take thoughts captive and character, building our character, being the, being true, you know, inside and out. It is, it's a choice. We're not victims of, uh, you know, circumstances. We can... We can make the changes necessary. We have the ability to overcome great odds. And number three, character brings lasting success uh, with people. Followers do not trust leaders whose character they know to be flawed, and they will not continue following them. That is that is so true. Eventually, it catches up with you, and you got to rebuild it. And uh, here's number four. Leaders cannot rise above the limitations of their character. I, I have seen this time and time again. I've seen it in particular 
in the college setting where young men and women come in and they have gifts and they have charisma and they're put in leadership positions, but they don't have character. They don't go to class. They say all the right things, and but what they do behind closed doors is completely different. And I've had a lot of friends who graduated with a ministry degree, but who didn't last in ministry, not because they didn't have gifts, not because they didn't have charisma, not because they didn't have knowledge, because they didn't have character. Or they surrounded themselves with people who didn't have character and it eventually brought them down as well. And it's a sad, sad thing. Uh, Maxwell quotes uh, Stephen Berglis, who is a psychologist and author of the book, The Success Syndrome. He, he says that um, people without character are headed for disaster in, in one of these four uh, areas. They And they all begin with A. Arrogance, painful feelings of aloneness, destructive adventure seeking, or adultery. And I think, uh, as I think about the story of, of Carl Lentz, it was a little bit of each of those. Um... And, and and so it's just a sad, sad thing. So how do you, you know, how do we, man, how do we move forward? Here's the thing. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter how good you are at your job if you don't have character. It also doesn't matter it, You know, if your character's great, but you're not good at your job, that's a problem too. You got to find a place where you're, you got to find a place because I I guess you're part of character me. There's got to be a, there, there's got to be part of your character that doesn't accept mediocrity. I think that's character trait. And I think I have been in places and positions where that was a definite flaw of mine. Uh, That I may have been in all the right places character-wise except for uh, really caring about my craft and my ministry. And that's something I got to live with. That's something I got to work on. That's something I got to do better in. The fact is, if if you're listening to this, you're called to be a person of character. You're created to be a person of character. You're created to be a person of deep conviction who's not tossed to and fro by the winds of change that come about through culture and society. When when culture and society would want to change their mind on time-honored truths every other day, it seems like. We're called to be steady. We're called to be anchored. We're called to be dependable. And as we get ready to enter 2021, here, here's the sad fact. The hardness of 2020 has revealed character on so many different levels. 2020 has revealed our penchant for placing blame on others, pointing the finger at people we disagree with. negativity how easy it is to be negative about so many different things and 
I feel like we have an opportunity. Listen, this is not going to happen collectively. But if a bunch of us, what if a bunch of us truly committed to be men and women of deep, meaningful character? Whose attitudes, whose positivity, whose optimism, whose drive was not determined by the flavor of the day on the evening news? What if we were truly committed to actually being the people that our kids think we are and want us to be and need us to be? Why don't we try to be the kind of people that we wish we had an option of voting for? And without fanfare and without pronouncements, we just did it. And we just became better, more solid people. And we were better neighbors and we were better husbands and wives and mothers and fathers and employers and employees and students and teachers and doctors and patients and better Christians. What if that happened? Could we change the world? Could we turn this thing around? Would it make a difference in our homes, in our communities, in our churches, in our workplaces? Could we see the embers of hope come to life in our lives and the lives of the people around us? I think so. I think we can. And that's what I'm committed to. That's what this is all about. This journey of personal development, this journey of trying to become a great coach, it's not about about getting my name out there. I mean, the name of this podcast is The Heath Mulligan Project. Basically, hey, I'm a messed up guy. I am not perfect. I am a work in progress. Don't give up on me. God's not finished with me yet. And if you're listening to this and you hear or you see something from me privately or on social media that doesn't line up with what I'm saying here, you call me out. You text me, email me, send me a DM, and you say, Bro, Heath, uh, Thought you said uh, you were trying to be this way. But this doesn't sound like that. I'm giving you permission to hold me to my own standards as a man. That's what I need from you. What do you need from me? Well, you let me know. Again, Email, DM, linktree.com slash Heath Mulliken. It's where you can find all the links to everywhere I'm at. You know, Google me. I'm the only Heath Mulliken. If I, if I, ever, uh, if I ever date again, uh, seriously, <laughs> all a woman's got to do is Google my name, and she's going to know pretty quick whether she... Uh, <laughs> She's going to see every interview I've ever conducted with people, and it's going to be pretty interesting. Uh, uh, you know, she's going to get to read all my blogs and listen to all my podcasts, and she's going to decide real quick whether or not uh, I'm the kind of man she wants to be with. I've kind of put myself out there like that, and that's all right. That's cool. So I pray you have a great day. 
pray no matter what you're facing, that God would give you peace and he would give you strength. He would give you the energy you need, the passion that you need to tackle whatever obstacles in your way. I pray that he would give you a deep longing to be a person of character, a person who truly lives out the fruit of the Holy Spirit. That's what this is. That's all character is, is the fruit of the Spirit growing in us. That's what I want for me, and that's what I want for you. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day, and we'll see you soon.